Zimbabwe has today been playing a waiting game. Not just Zimbabwe, in fact. The whole world has been watching with bated breath on the all-important presidential results. We certainly here didn't expect an indication today of when this might take place. But earlier this afternoon, local time, the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission announced that at 9pm, that's in just over two hours' time, Zimbabweans will begin to learn who will be leading their country. Well, today in Harare, it's been calm but tense as national and international agencies have been united in condemning yesterday's violence, which left six people dead. Meanwhile, behind the scenes, a lot of diplomatic shuffling has been taking place, including, we understand, a discussion between the two presidential candidates. Well, Sophie Kenya is in Harare for us. Sophie. Well, good evening from Harare, Lukwesa. Uh, it's a calm evening, but tense, as you mentioned there in your introduction. Tight security uh, within the city centre. There's been quite a, a few events taking place today. A bit, or a bit difficult to follow all of them because everyone is giving a statement uh, after statement, really. But what we know is that in the past hour, the uh, spokesman, or the spokesperson of the National Police, uh, Charity Charamba, has confirmed that at least six people were killed in the fierce battle between police and protesters. And we also heard from the leader of the MDC, that's the MDC Alliance, Nelson Chamisa, who said that uh, those who died yesterday in those fierce battles were not members of the opposition, that is his party or his alliance, so to speak. He also said that he will not accept any result that does not agree with the will of the people. So sentiments coming out today, and as you mentioned there earlier, um, observers also speaking and uh, giving their reaction to what happened yesterday afternoon, those deadly uh, fierce battles between protesters and police. This is what the opposition leader, Nelson Chamisa, said uh, a little earlier. We respect Zach. We respect the law. But we are being abused for respecting the law. We have a percentage. We know that we defeated Munangagwa in all the constituencies where his MPs were winning. Munangagwa was losing. In all the constituencies where my MPs were not performing well, I won. Overall, I have a majority vote. Well, uh, Nelson Chamisa there uh, reacting to today's events and also uh, giving his uh, alliance's uh, uh, position on the events. We are also, of course, as you mentioned earlier, will be waiting for the presidential election results in about two and a, uh, two and a half uh, hours' time. The violence has, of course, elicited quite some reaction uh, from across uh, uh, the, the country and, of course, the observers who are here, both international and regional observers. Earlier today, the Commonwealth head of the Observer Group, John Dramani Mahama, had this to say. I believe that circumstances in which live ammunition is used against an armed civilians, um, I don't think it's appropriate. And we said that quite clearly. We denounce the violence and the vandalism that took place, but at the same time, we uh, denounce the excessive use of force by the security agencies. The progress achieved so far could be undermined if all parties and their supporters do not demonstrate tolerance and respect for the rule of law. The electoral process is yet to conclude, and we are at a moment in Zimbabwean history that calls for the greatest maturity and leadership. So uh, that's uh, the uh, Commonwealth uh, head of the Observer team here in Zimbabwe. We have heard from the Movement for Democratic Change Alliance, but what about the ZANU-PF party, the party uh, that everyone is saying, look, they did not win this election. What are they saying? This is what the, uh, one of the spokesperson, jo uh, one of the spokesperson, Paul Mangwana, had to say earlier today. We should be able to uh, accept results of an election because when you go into an election, two things are likely to happen. Either you win or you lose. If you lose, re-strategize so that you contest the next election and do better. That is the attitude we are asking our colleagues in the opposition to take. We will also appeal to our own supporters to celebrate appreciating that those who lost want to continue living in peace in Zimbabwe.
That is uh, the ZANU-PF reacting there. Um, as you can imagine, there's a lot that has been ha happening in Zimbabwe right across the country, but mostly here in Harare within the city centre. And I'm sure you're wondering what people are feeling, uh, what we are also making of the situation here. And I'm now joined by our correspondent here in Zimbabwe, uh, Shingai Nyoka. Thanks for taking time to talk to us. Shingai, um, I know this is, uh, as opposed to just being your own country, a personal experience too. How has the day been and, and uh, the past few days as you covered these elections? Well, this has been unprecedented, uh, Sophie, as a journalist who's covered elections here for the last 20 years, um, especially with these elections, Zimbabwe has had thought that this country might turn the corner, that it was an opportunity for a fresh start and a new beginning. And when I went around uh, covering the different voices in the rural areas and in Harare, there was a sense of optimism that things had finally changed, um, especially with the departure of former President Robert Mugabe, but the scenes that we saw yesterday um, I think incited a fear in people that perhaps very little has changed. Um, their concerns about the presidential uh, vote, but many of the people that I spoke to have said um, they've urged a maturity on both sides for both uh, ZANU-PF and the movement for democratic change. And what they're saying is that regardless of who wins this election, uh, the result will be a fresh start for Zimbabwe. And they're urging uh, the parties, both Zanu PF and the MDC, to uh, concede whoever the loser is. Uh, but we'll know in the next few hours who that winner is and uh, what the situation will be. Yes, we just heard from the, uh, the leader of the opposition, MDC Alliance. And he was very seriously saying, look, we are not going to accept any results that are not the will of the people. And he actually said the people who are on the streets protesting are, are not really members of his, uh, his alliance. What does that do to their supporters? Because they were obviously opposing the results that had been released earlier in the day. It's a very precarious situation that Zimbabwe finds itself in. And yesterday I was at uh, the barricades where I spoke to some of those uh, protesters. Some of them had the MDC shirts on and I asked them why they were out uh, protesting on the streets. And they said they were there because they'd been told by their leader that uh, the election had been won, that he was the winner of that election and they wanted the results announced. And so many of them, uh, at least on the face of it, say that they've been taking their cue uh, from Nelson Chamisa and at this stage um, if he says he's he's not in charge and he's not in control of those particular groups it's very worrying uh, for Zimbabwe. ZANU-PF supporters have said um, that um, they have been told by their leaders that they should accept the results uh, win or lose and so the country waits to see after these results are announced um, and, and the question is whether the um, supporters will be able to accept the result. And that's the question isn't it? Thank you very much indeed. Shingai Nyoka, um, our correspondent uh, here in Zimbabwe. Well, there you have it, Lucresa. We're now just waiting for the country's electoral commission to announce the final results, the final presidential results, when Zimbabweans and indeed the whole world will know who is now Zimbabwe's president. Back to you in London. Sophie Kenyon Harare, thank you very much.